Bill Hunter is a salvationist who, with the support of his wife Michelle, has engineered an alternative and contemporary Christian fellowship in the heart of Brisbane, Australia. Barry Gott talks to Bill Hunter and discovers the drive and motivation behind God's Sports Arena. Well, it's great to be in your home this morning and uh, to talk a little bit about, about your life and about God's Sports Arena and, and, and those sorts of things. So, uh, first of all, how did you get to start in life? Uh, I was born into a pastor's home. My parents are Salvation Army ministers and as a result of that we sort of moved around a lot between uh, Queensland, New South Wales and ACT and although I probably didn't appreciate it at the time it was um, certainly a, a growing thing and mm. made me mature very quick and so yeah I, I had, a, had a ball. I didn't like school but I loved sports so yeah. Mm. Uh, so how did you come to be involved with the Broncos? Yeah interesting because I think my love of sport and my love of God combined is great because Wayne Bennett, as most of us know, is, has been the coach of the Broncos for a long time. Him and I used to work in the police together. Okay. And so when they lost their chaplain in 1997, um, I was asked by Sports Chaplains of Australia, or they asked Wayne Bennett, would they like to have me as a chaplain? And we already had a good relationship, so he was quite happy to have me as the chaplain at the Broncos. So this is my 18th year now, and yeah, having a, having a ball at the Broncos. In my role as chaplain at the Broncos, I've had uh, wonderful opportunities to do some of the guys' weddings and the christenings of their children. In this case here, I did Darren Lockyer's wedding and did his uh, son's christenings and as a, an appreciation gift, he gave me this beautiful Origin jersey which he, as you can see, played in game two in 2010 and wrote a beautiful little message there to me. So really it was a, a wonderful gesture on his part to be able to, to, to give that gift to me. But um, the blessings of helping someone, I didn't really need the gift, but what a, what a magnificent gift and a, a wonderful blessing it was to me to get something like that from the great Darren Lockyer. How's the relationship between the chaplain and the coach in the team environment? Wayne and, and most coaches are pretty good at just letting you do your thing and just okay. being a presence and, and when, when you're needed, you, you, you've called upon. Uh, I've done some of the guys' weddings and, and their, children's, uh, their children's christenings, occasional funerals, things like that, a bit of counselling, mm -hmm. just helping out. Just being a, a real positive role model and an encourager in, in the environment, which is really great. Um, God Sports Arena, that's a very interesting title. Mm. How did that come about? God just moved in my life and said, Bill, you need to get off your backside basically and, and do something for broken people mm -hmm. and, and design a church that people who normally wouldn't find church comfortable to find church comfortable. Yeah. So I didn't realise at the time that it was probably going to be for, for people who, you know, recovering from addiction or coming out of prison, but that's the way God's designed it. Mm. So I started God Sports Arena with a bit of a sporty theme flavour to it, and, and it's quite quirky, but it's fun. And it certainly doesn't inhibit what we do no, at God Sports sure. Arena. So, and that started you know, 2010, and, and the blessings since then have just been unbelievable. And you, you yourself have seen some of oh, the yeah. blessings that, that you know, people's lives have been changed. Nothing through what I've done, but just God moving through the place and moving through people's lives. I actually gave my life uh, over to Jesus in that church uh, one Sunday night, and uh, my life's been gone from strength to strength to strength with Him in my life. And uh, yeah, so it's an amazing church, and I would encourage anyone that hasn't been there, you're missing out, and come along. You mentioned to me before there was some somewhat of a transition. Of the uh, of the congregation, if I may put it in that terms, from what you originally intended to what it's yeah. become now, and that's just God moving. You know, I, I thought maybe we could touch a lot of people who play sport on weekends and find it difficult to get to church, don't like church. Maybe Sunday night at five thirty when all the sports finished and that come to church, and it, it hasn't really worked out that way. But having said that, just recently we've had a few sporting personalities come along, and mm -hmm. people who are in the prime of their sporting career coming along and really enjoying it and getting something out of it. So. What I love about GSA is that it's a real community. Everyone's supporting each other and, you know, being a sports person or an ex-sports person, um, I just love that, the whole team environment. It's there for anybody, really. Yeah. And, and even when I started it, I was thinking of family and friends and people who don't normally go to church, maybe we can get them into church. Very simple format. Um, we'll get started in, in a moment with the blow of the whistle and it goes something like this. We'll stand up, we'll shake hands. First half will finish about six o'clock, maybe a couple of minutes after. We go out, back to the dressing rooms, have our oranges, suck in the big ones. And then when we come back, we... 
We swap side. Why don't you stand up, shake hands with the opposition, and uh, we'll get started. <laughs> So many people that come through our doors that are just broken people. I'm mm. not, I mean, most of us are broken in yeah. some way, shape, or form, but they're broken from busted lives, addiction, broken relationships. Yeah. As I said before, some of them have been to prison. And we've got some beautiful people in our church who have been to prison and been in addiction but turned their lives around. GSA has been a wonderful experience for me. I am uh, heavily involved when I was in jail. Um, Bill and Michelle came and visited me every month and uh, I was blessed to have them and the letters of support that I got from all members of that congregation reminded me who I was and reminded me to have the strength to carry that message to people in jail who were in a very, very dark place. So um, I cannot speak highly enough of GSA. Mm. And that's so encouraging for, for me and our leadership team and people that coming to, to God's sports on a regular basis. Yeah, I, I noticed attending the services that a lot, there is a dramatic change in people. When they come in touch with the Lord, yeah. their lives are turned completely around because they now see a future for themselves. Yeah. Um, you have a lot of guest speakers, obviously, coming to the place. How do you source those? I think guys have set me up with this wonderful network of, of mm -hmm. people through sport, mm -hmm. through the Salvation Army, yeah. through church networks. Uh, through my running, through my business associates, just have so many good contacts. So it's it's great to be able to have that variety of speakers. Everyone brings something different to the to the table, so to speak. Jerry Gosson, so I think we also stand up and give him a big warm welcome. GSA, welcome. Thanks, Jared. Yeah. I was very privileged to be part of Jared Gosson's team. I suppose you could say at some uh, big events around the world, Paralympics in Sydney, as one of his guide runners, we get roped together. Uh, world Championships in France in 2002, a whole host of different events and, and training with Jared, and I got to know him very, very well. I have a lot of respect for him, he's a great guy. Uh, so I'll ask him a few questions tonight, a little bit about his life, he's quite inspirational. Uh, you're born blind, Jared. most people probably don't know, we just need to get that out there. Yeah. How, do you know, how did you know that you were actually different to people? Yeah, how did you know you were? <laughs> Blind and other people saw. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I asked that badly, but that's all right. <laughs> just when I, when I couldn't see anybody, that's when I knew I was blind. So. <laughs> <laughs> the speakers at GSA are absolutely fantastic. We learn something each week, and the encouragement and sharing time is exactly that. It's so encouraging and everybody gets something out of it. And I know a lot of people like coming because of that variety mm. in our speakers. And, and a lot of our speakers are recovering from something in their life, some brokenness in mm. their life. But then again, we have a lot of Salvation Army pastors or ministers who may speak, or, or other pastors that may speak as well. So there's that really good variety and difference in, in our speakers. And that's good, because I see that on your list of people that come, you have the, the Commissioner of the, of the Eastern Territory, come, which is fantastic, yeah. yeah. And um, I'm sure he will, once again, appreciate the, the level of which we are ministering to those people, or you are ministering to those people. <laughs>
How you doing? What a great opportunity it was tonight just to get up and share with people, uh, people that are hurting, people that are struggling. Uh, my life has been somewhat of a struggle at times, but uh, it was just an honour to have to uh, have the opportunity to get up and share with these people. Um, some of them shared with me how, how they related to my story. And so just to be able to journey with these people and to uh, pray with them, share with them, and I know God will use whatever um, I have to tell them and whatever they have to tell me. And together, I know God can uh, do his work, not just in my life, but theirs as well. Um, you mentioned running recently um, in your conversation. What, how much has that played in your life? It's been a big part of my life. I think I was an addict myself for a long time, and I just I was addicted to performance and winning and, and being a really good athlete. And I got a lot out of running. Uh, I was a very selfish person, and I understand elite athletes what they've got to be, mm -hmm. what they've got to do to be a great athlete. Let's be selfish. And so I learned a lot about that. I learned a lot about myself, uh, how selfish I was. And now, in the last 15, 16 years, God's given me a, a strength with my running to help others. You know, mm -hmm. I've been, I've run at Paralympic events and, and world championships around the world with a blind guy as his guide runner. I don't know how you do this. How do you put your faith and trust in other people like myself to, to be guide runners? Because your coach and I, we tried it out one day on each other. <laughs> we were hopeless. What a wonderful opportunity yes. to invest in people's lives and help people. And even now, through the Salvation Army uh, Papua New Guinea project, where I'm a part of a mentoring program where we're mentoring some young Papua New Guinea people who are in the Salvation Army, uh, potential to be leaders in their community in the Salvation Army and I'm mentoring uh, them to run the Gold Coast Marathon. Uh, so that happened last year and again this year and it's just fantastic that I can use my running now to actually help other people, not just to be good runners and get through events but to uh, nurture them in other mm -hmm. areas of their life and spiritually and mentally and emotionally and that as well, it's great. Oh, it's fantastic. Well, what do you see the future of GSA? It's interesting, there's been times where I've always thought, you know, where's our future? What are we going to do? Do we, do we need to get bigger? Do we need to diversify? Do we need to go somewhere else as well? Do we need to two services instead of one if we get a little bit big? But I really leave it up to God, and I've always had the three Ps in my life, and I've, when I've adopted those, everything's gone to plan, and God's just had a great purpose. So patience, perseverance, prayer. Mm -hmm. So I, if I'm patient, if I persevere, I just keep asking God for the direction. It just seems to flow. And just seems to happen. So I haven't really got any great plans for God's sports, or I'm leaving that in God's hands. And I know that God's just all over it. I know that many people's lives already been changed, but I know that many other people's lives are going to be changed. Mm -hmm. And already we've started to diversify a little bit, and even down the Gold Coast Temple, they've started to do once a month a, a God sports arena flavour service down there on Sunday nights. through that program obviously align themselves with God Sports Arena. God Sports Arena is just a fabulous place to worship on Sunday night because it's really a place where our participants can really connect with God in a very real way because there's no kind of um, religious pretenses there it's just basically people being very real they're able to share about themselves and they're able to have a great sharing time just feel relaxed they come away feeling actually that they've really connected with God in a very meaningful way when they attend there. Hey I go to a sports church because I enjoy it I love the people it's great no matter 
matter what our background, no matter what our present, no matter what our future, you love us and love us deeply. So I thank you for that uh, unconditional love. Thank you for this place. Thank you for the people that are contributing tonight. And I really pray that it'll be a, an incredible time of uh, being together and feeling love. Yeah. Amen. That's critical to our success as a church, yeah. I think, is having that connection with Munya, uh, with Street Level, mm -hmm. uh, obviously Brisbane City Temple as well, because that's where we're meeting at the yeah. moment. All the people from Munya, put your hand up if you're from Munya. Let's welcome the people from Munya because you people are the best kind of here, so. So I think to get those people involved, and I've been going up to Munya Chapel on Tuesday night for probably eight or nine years on a regular basis now, and having that connection with those people, having that relationship sort of incorporates them into our God sure. Sports Arena, and, and, and that's a fantastic relationship we've got. Hi, I'm Meg. I love the stories that you hear when you come to GSA. And I'm James. I'm a recovering addict. I love GSA because it provides me with a weekly top-up of thankfulness and gratitude for my new life. every week for, to keep us going for the rest of the week.